Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of May. Terrorists involved in killing of TV actor in India's Jammu and Kashmir gunned down. Pakistan hikes fuel prices by rupees 30 per litre to unlock IMF funding. And Sri Lanka's president calls for international help to overcome economic crisis. And now for all the details. Four terrorists, including two involved in the killing of a female TV performer, were gunned down by security forces in separate encounters in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Friday. The slain terrorists belong to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba outfit. Kashmir Valley has seen an upsurge in violence since the conviction of the region's best-known separatist Yasin Malik in a terror funding case last week. Security forces on Friday gunned down four terrorists affiliated with Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba outfit, including two involved in killing of a female television artist in separate encounters in Avantipura and Srinagar districts of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Police confirmed the two slain terrorists in Avantipura had shot dead 35-year-old TV and social media performer Amreen Bhatt on Wednesday outside her home. The region has seen an upsurge in violence after Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik was sentenced to life in prison this week in a 2017 terror funding case. A senior police official said, Ten terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based terror outfits have been killed in the valley in the past three days. In the past three days, there were 10 terrorists in which there were 3 Jaish Mohammed and 7 Laskar Tawa. India has long accused Pakistan infiltrates terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. Terrorists have killed more than a dozen people, mostly police, in Kashmir this year, while over 80 terrorists have been gunned down in security operations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurated the country's biggest drone festival, Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022 in capital New Delhi. Over 1,600 delegates comprising foreign diplomats, armed forces, private companies and drone startups, among others, will participate in the two-day event. With over 70 exhibitors displaying various use cases of drones, product launches, panel discussions and flying demonstrations, the festival will include a display of a Made in India drone taxi prototype. Speaking at the event, PM Modi said that the enthusiasm surrounding drone technology in India indicates that it could soon become an emerging sector of employment generation in India. Highlighting government initiatives in the drone space, the Prime Minister said that the centre was ensuring that technology was available for the masses. Use of drones will increase in the defence sector and disaster management, he added. टेक्नोलॉजी को प्रोत्साहन गुड गवर्नेंस के ईज ऑफ लिविंग के इसी कमिटमेंट को आगे बढ़ाने का एक और माध्यम है ड्रोन के रूप में हमारे पास एक और ऐसा स्मार्ट टूल आ गया है जो बहुत जल्द सामान्य से सामान्य भारतीय के जीवन का हिस्सा बनने जा रहा है in news from Pakistan, the prices of petroleum products shot up on Friday in Pakistan after the newly formed government, left with fewer options amid deepening economic crisis, reduced fuel subsidies in hopes of revival of an IMF bailout package. Fuel prices have been increased by Rs 30 in local currency, the highest single hike ever. Fuel prices in Pakistan shot up on Friday by Rs 30 per litre, the highest single hike ever after the newly formed government of Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif reduced fuel subsidies, hoping to revive a $6 billion package by IMF, the International Monetary Fund. 
Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail in a tweet announced the decision. The new price of petrol will be 179.86 rupees per liter and diesel will be 174.15 rupee. Mifta said it had become indispensable to shift the fuel prices burden on the masses as the IMF had refused to give any relief until the subsidy announced by ousted Premier Imran Khan was removed. He said that due to Khan's unilateral decision, the government was bearing a loss of 120 rupees billion per month. Khan, now in the opposition, said nation has started to pay the price for the imported government's subservience before foreign masters. और उस सब्सिडी की वजह से यहां पर पेट्रोल और ईंधन का कंजम्पशन भी बढ़ गया है और हमारी फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व पे प्रेशर भी आ रहा है और उसके साथ-साथ जैसा कि आईएमएफ ने कहा है कि आईएमएफ भी हमसे हमें मजीद कर्जे का प्रोग्राम नहीं देगा जब तक कि हम पेट्रोल और डीजल की कीमत ना बढ़ाएं the removal of fuel subsidies is likely to have political consequences for the new coalition government with election expected within 16 months moving on Record-breaking temperatures are being reported in most areas of South Asia, including Pakistan. Mango farmers are expecting a 50% decline in yield this year as ongoing heat wave and water shortage continues to batter Pakistan, according to the chief of a growers and exporters association. As ongoing heat wave and water shortage continues to batter Pakistan, Mango farmers are expecting a 50% decline in yield this year, according to the Chief of Growers and Exporters Association. Tando Alayar district in Sindh province is one of Pakistan's richest agricultural regions, which grows a range of crops like wheat, sugarcane, cotton and mangoes. However, farmers are facing less than bountiful yields this mango season. Pakistan witnessed an extreme heat wave this month with temperatures in the south crossing 50 degrees Celsius. The South Asian nation has jumped from winter to summer without experiencing a spring, according to the country's climate change ministry. More than a billion people are at risk from the effects of heat in the region, scientists have warned, linking the early onset of an intense summer to climate change. Wahid Ahmad, head of PFVA, Pakistan Fruit and Vegetable Exporters, Importers and Merchants Association said Pakistan was facing a 50% drop in mango production this year. This is a heat wave ka bada impact because in March, the temperature was 28-29. और एकदम से हिट होके वो 42 पे गया जब आपके फ्लावर्स हो जाते हैं तो उसके ऊपर ये बहुत बड़ा इंपैक्ट पड़ता है हीट वेव का जब हीट वेव का इंपैक्ट पड़ता है तो जाहिरी बात है प्रोडक्शन में भी पड़ेगा इसकी वजह से हमारी जो फसल है साल की 9 लाख टन रह गई है पाकिस्तान इज द वर्ल्ड्स फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट मैंगो प्रोड्यूसर आफ्टर इंडिया चाइना थाईलैंड एंड इंडोनेशिया अकॉर्डिंग टू अहमद हाउएवर द अनटाइमली स्पाइक इन टेंपरेचर हैव डेंटेड देयर प्रोडक्शन and led to a revaluation of export targets. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has called for the international community to help the island nation overcome its ongoing economic crisis and meet the essential requirements of food, fuel and medicines. Virtually addressing Future of Asia conference held in Tokyo on Thursday, President Rajapaksa underscored inflation has risen in the country due to COVID-19 pandemic, which has crippled the lucrative tourism industry, reduced remittances from expatriate workers and other factors along with debt burden have led to the crisis. He said efforts are underway to form a national consensus on the way forward. Meanwhile, IMF, the International Monetary Fund, in a statement on Thursday said that it was in talks with Sri Lanka's authorities on a package and reaffirmed support that would restore economic stability and debt sustainability. To find money for supporting relief measures, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe earlier this week said his administration was undertaking a review of possible expenditure cuts across the country's bloated government sector. In news from Afghanistan, the United Nations Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in Afghanistan has expressed serious concern about the deterioration of human rights across the country and the erasure of women from public life.
He called on the Taliban authorities to reverse growing restrictions on women and investigate attacks against religious minorities. Richard Bennett, the United Nations Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in Afghanistan, said on Thursday that the country was facing severe human rights challenges calling on Taliban authorities to reverse growing restrictions on women and investigate attacks against religious minorities. At the end of an 11-day visit to Afghanistan, his first since the position was created, Richard Bennett told reporters the Taliban needed to immediately reverse policies that negatively impacted women's access to public space. Afghanistan is facing a plethora of critical human rights challenges that are having a severe impact on the population. I urge the authorities to acknowledge the human rights challenges that they are facing and to close the gap between their words and their deeds. He described concerns over severe inhibitions of women's access to education after the group made a U-turn on allowing girls to go to secondary school in March and this month announced rules requiring women to cover their faces to be enforced by punishing their closest male relatives. Taliban deputy spokesman Inamullah Samangani denied there was a concerning human rights situation, saying they had paid attention to the issues mentioned and were working on the issue of girls' secondary school education. More on news from Afghanistan. Eyewitnesses and survivors have described the moment deadly blasts rock Afghan cities of mazar sharif and Kabul this week as horrific and unfortunate. At least 14 people lost their lives in the attacks. Witnesses on Thursday described the movement three blasts tore through passenger vehicles in the northern Afghan city of mazar sharif on Wednesday killing at least nine people and wounding several. A blast survivor undergoing treatment said it was horrific as he felt he was about to die, but he was fortunate. Militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attacks in predominantly Shiite areas. The blast in mazar sharif was followed by another explosion at a mosque in capital Kabul that killed at least five persons. Witnesses in Kabul said someone had placed the bomb inside a fan in the mosque, which exploded when people were praying. UN rights envoy in Afghanistan Richard Bennett on Thursday called for investigation of the attacks, especially targeting Shia and Sufi religious minorities, a trend he said bore hallmarks of crimes against humanity. Growing violence in recent months has caused security challenges for the Taliban who took over the country last August as foreign forces withdrew. Despite claims that they have eliminated most of Islamic State's presence in Afghanistan, Attacks have continued in many parts of the country. A mega handicraft exhibition in Srinagar city of India's Jammu in Kashmir territory attracted scores of visitors this week. The event held on the banks of the famous Dal Lake aimed to promote local artisans and their traditional handmade products. A mega handicraft exhibition on the banks of the famed Dal Lake to promote local artisans in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory attracted a large number of tourists this week. Organized by the Directorate of Handicrafts and Handlooms, several stalls displayed unique handmade products like carpets, wood carvings, shawls, crivel, embroidery and artworks of paper mache, among other items. Dal Lake is one of the most attractive water bodies of the territory where thousands of tourists visit every year to enjoy the rides in the famed Shikara houseboats, considered as the jewel of the lake. We have a side the beautiful Dalka Nazara and we have a side page shopping. 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 We have a done by artisans and pure quality of products. 
tourist season is on peak currently in the Kashmir Valley and thousands of tourists are visiting every day to enjoy the mesmerizing beauty of the Himalayan region. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.